This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us this evening for the learning of Torah Hashem. As Hashem is back. As always, we begin. With continued appreciation to all of you for coming and making this year possible. Tonight we have a special sponsor, a uh, mispalel of mine and a uh, CD Talmud, Ben a CD Talmud. Um, he's dedicating the shir Ili Nishmas, his parents, who both passed away this year, Perel Bas Pinchas and Chaim Baruch Ben Zavel Perlman. That's uh, Harvey and Carol Perlman, and for Zavol Yeshaya ben Chaim Baruch, that then Hashem should have an aliyah, they should be Melitza Yaisha for the family, for all of us and all of Klai Yisrael. And we thank the Perlman Mishpacha for all that they do. Uh, we also learned the Fushalite for my Rebbitzin, Miriam Libabas Devora, who restarted chemotherapy, for Chaim ben Rachel, and Rafal Zev ben Shendel Malka. That they should all have a refuah shalema besides Sharkha the Yisrael. So we know the parish is called Toldois, Elu Toldois Yitzhak ben Avram, and the uh, spelling of Toldois is a very highly unusual spelling. It's spelled Tovvav Lamid Dalit Saf. So it's Considered not male and not chaser. Male, it would be spelled with two vubs. If it would be chaser, it would be spelled without any vubs. Instead, it's spelled with one vub in the beginning, tov vub lamed, dalid, and then the second vub is missing. So part of it is male and part of it is chaser. So the Sefer Shalolo Yechso says, well, it's simple because it's referring to the toldos, to the offspring, and of the offspring, Yaakov was Male, and Esav was Chaser. So that's why it's part Male and part Chaser. That's the famous chat. And I was thinking that it's true, but it might be Pumfaket. It might be that the Male refers to Esav, and the Chaser refers to Yaakov. Because since it's talking about Toldois, how they were born, the fact of the matter is, is that Yaakov, Esav was born complete. That's one of the reasons why it was called Esau, because also he was, he was made. The Tagmianis ben Azil says he was born with a beard, with kochei vishane, with molars and front teeth, while Yaakov was a regular baby. He was born like a baby. So therefore, if anything, the mole might refer to Esau, and the chaser might refer to Yaakov, because we're talking about toldos, we're talking about when they were born. Avram Holides Yitzchak. Of course, we all know that this just screams out for interpretation. It says, Eilat told us Yitzchak ben Avram. This is the account of Yitzchak ben Avram. Avram Holides Yitzchak. Obviously, if Yitzchak was ben Avram, then Avram Holides Yitzchak. Seems to be totally superfluous. So we know that Rashi tells us that the Rabbi Nishra made a big miracle. And so cluster pun of Shal Yitzchak doim el Avram. He made that Yitzchak should look like Avram. Now, uh, the Balaturim spices this up by saying that the gematria of Hoylid is exactly the gematria of Daimon. Uh, Hoylid is exactly the gematria of Daimon. So it's telling us that... Uh, it's not working here. Uh, it, 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 the gematria of... Uh, Daima is the same gematria as Hoylet to tell us that Hashem made it that Yitzchak should look like Abram. Now we know why this was necessary. This was necessary because of the Leitzone Hadar. The Leitzone Hadar, the scoffers wanting to um, put a blemish on the creation of Klal Yisrael, they said, oh, this is a, a nation that is supposed to be moral, its very start is created from an act of adultery because may Abi Melech Misabrasar. And they said it's reasonable. She was living for, for, 
with, with Avram Avinu, she got married at 15, so she was living 75 years with Avram Avinu. She didn't have children in three quarters of a century, so it's probable that the child is born from Avimelech. So the Truma Sadashin says that the reason why this is brought to four in this week's Pasha, in this week, thank you, Nisano, for coming special, so that we could get it also on Kalalashin. Here it is. When you have so many mediums, by the way, those people that um, utilize the free mediums for these shiurim should be aware that uh, I part of my panasa is the sending out to these tapes and CDs. So if you use it, you, you might want to dedicate a share. Okay. So anyway, uh, the Truman Sardashian says that the um, Leitzani Adar said, where do you think an ace of came from? <laughs> Yeah, if 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 Avram and Sarah had Yitzchak, so then that was a pure strain. Both of them were tzaddikim. So then, how could Yitzchak have an Esav? Yitzchak and Rivka were both righteous. It must be that Yitzchak is not so pure, because Me'avi Melech Nisabra Sarah. Oh, Me'avi Melech Nisabra Sarah. That's very understandable. How there was an Esav comes into the picture. You see the Lutzan, the scoffers. They, uh, they have plenty of time. Many of the scoffers don't have anything better to do. They have plenty of time to come up with all kinds of, uh, all kinds of uh, back, backings for their uh, scoffing claims. The truth of the matter is, is that where Esav came from is because and we know Rivka had a brother Lovan. Lovan and Esav fit very well together. And she had a wicked father, Besuel, a murderous father, Besuel. So it's not, it's not a problem, if you think about it for a moment, uh, where an ace of came from. There was that uh, genetics in Rivka's background, right? But the scoffers rather would want to just throw a monkey wrench in the entire beginnings of Kalal Yisrael. And therefore Hashem made a miracle, and made it that Yitzchak should look exactly like Avram, so nobody should say that me avi melech nisabasara. Many many times I've said over that you see from here that you don't say ah I don't have to deal with the lets, I don't have to deal with the scoffer. You see the Rabbi Nishon deals with scoffers. You have to be lightsy maliban shol shel litzanim. You have to you have to knock it out of people's minds because litzanas achas doicha meyatichachais. So you have to get rid of the Lutzanas. So we know that there was a veritable, there was a, uh, there was a whole adventure that happened when Rivka was pregnant. And it caused her a lot of pain. Every time, Rashi says, by Yitzraitzu is a Lushan Rita, running. Every time she passed by the yeshiva of Shein the Eder, so Yaakov ran to go out. Every time she passed by an idolatrous shrine, an idolatrous church, Esav ran to, to go out. 
And therefore she was, she thought she had a child that was schizophrenic. So she went, Lidra Hashem, to the base of Medrash of Shem Ve'ever, to see what's going on. So there is something that begs the obvious question. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin that Rebbe and Antoninus had a disagreement of when the Yetzirah comes into a child. Rebbe said it was Meshach Yetzirah from the time of conception and Antoninus said it was at the time of birth. Because Antoninus said if the Yetzirah would come into a person at the time of Yetzirah, then the baby would uh, break out of the womb early and miscarry. Now that in itself deserves a moment of attention. Because if the Yetzirah would be in the child from the time of conception, then the baby would break out early and be a miscarriage. Why? Because the Yetzirah's objective is to cause us room. Why would the baby leave? First of all, it's very comfortable in the womb. The baby's learning Torah from the Malach. Why would the baby leave? To, to die? To die? And the answer is, is because the Yetzirah causes a person, tries to seduce a person, to takadai, to their ruination. It's a good insight from what the Gemara's question is. It can't be that the Yetzirah would be in the womb, because if the Yetzirah would be in the womb, then the baby would leave. The baby would leave or would die. Yes, that's the Yetzirah's objective. It's important for people to realize what the Yetzirah does. So here's a person. The Yetzirah is seducing him to scream at his wife. To scream at her husband. Because you have to know the Yetzirah wants a person's room. If there's no harmony in the home, that's a ruination. What does what is, what is Rashi say in Pashas B'chukai? He's saying, ain't shalom, ain't klum. If there's no peace, there's nothing. So it's a total ruination of a human being if there's fighting in the house. So that's why the Yetzirah puts so much effort in seducing us. Well, I'm not going to let her get, get away with this. I'm not going to be a sucker. I'm not going to be a wimp. That's all from the Yetzirah. Because the Yetzirah wants to ruin a person. Same way we see young boys smoking. Now why would a young boy smoke? It's going to cause him to die, die early. It's very likely that he'll end up sitting in a chemo lab with poison pumping through his veins. Why would a young boy smoke? It's the Yetzirah, because the Yetzirah wants to kill him. Or, for example, there are people that always have an excuse not to learn. Days go by without learning. Why? Because learning is life in this world and life in the next world. And that's why all the Pesukim of Torah are two parts. Right? All the Why? Because Rameir says, Yezoicha to this world and the next world. Right? So the Yetzirah wants to kill you in this world and the next world. That's why Yetzirah invests so much time into getting a person not to learn. So anyway, Antonina said to Rebbe that if the Yetzirah would be present in the womb, then there would be much more miscarriages. And Rebbe retract and agreed because it says in the Pesach, the Pesach at this ravens. By the womb, by the opening of the womb, that's where sin crouches. So the Yetzirah comes at the time of birth. If the Yetzirah comes at the time of the birth, then why over here does it say that Esau is running out to go and uh, go to a church that's in the womb. There's no Yetzirah in the womb. It's a big cash. There's a big cash. There's different schools of thought to answer this cash. For example, the Pardis Yosef 
brings down from the Be'er Sheva that there's two Yetzirahs. There's a Yetzirah Sichli and a Yetzirah Mas. There's a Yetzirah in thought and there's a Yetzirah in action. He says the Yetzirah in thought is there in the womb. Yetzirah of action is first when the baby is born. So therefore, since the Yetzirah Masai is, is, uh, is, is only when the baby is born, that's why there's no miscarriages. But the eights are sickly to want. If you look at Rashi, Rashi doesn't even say ruts by going to the church. He just says mafarkets. The eights are a, to want to go to church, that's already there, but not my side. That's why, by the way, we know that even though Rivka was only 23, she never had children anymore because when Asaph came out, he destroyed her womb that she should not have any more children. There shouldn't be any more competition. Right? So that's why he came out red. That's why he was full of blood. It was his mother's blood. That's why he was called Edai. He was already a murderous, a murderous child. But that was already when he was born. Right? That was by the door of the womb. That's why he already had a Yetzirah. Um, the Yechi Ruvain brings down a, a suggestion that there's when the child represents a nation, then the Yetzirah comes even at the time of Yetzirah. Interesting answer. But I wanted to suggest a different answer. Simple. And I'll answer a lot of other caches. And that is, this wasn't natural. And it wasn't Mikoyach Yetzirah. It was Nebuah. The Rabbi Nisham orchestrated this uh, prenatal pain, this pregnancy pain, in order to reveal to Rivka who Yaakov was and who Asa was. She needed this information because she would have to orchestrate that Yaakov should get the brachas. So although Asa was a very clever person, and was able to trick even one of the others, even Yitzchak, was able to hoodwink Yitzchak. He couldn't hoodwink his mother because his mother had this nevuah. What? And here's my Kiddush. Once she went to shame, the pain stopped. But why? If she passed in a, a church, it should have continued. No. Yaakov and Esav didn't have Yitzhahoros. The only reason why Asa ran to the church was because that, the Rabbi Nisham orchestrated that in order to give Rivka the Nevoah. That she should know, Verav that she should know that you have Shnei Goyim Bebitnech, and she should realize that this one of the children really wants idolatry. It's definitely not Yaakov. So she should recognize who Asa really is. That's why Rivka is the same letters as Kerba. Because she was named Rivka because it was critical that she should know what was going on within her. Now, by the way, there's a, again, a, um, a side over here that's a very important lesson. And that is, you benefit a lot when you go to a Rav or a Chacham or a Shashivat when you ask a Shayim. She wouldn't have gone to shame. She wouldn't have gone to ask the Shiloh, she would have continued with the pain. By going and asking the Shiloh, she saved herself the pain. Also, she found out the information that would be necessary to give Kalal Yisrael the brachas. Now, I said this Mahalik answers questions. Listen to the questions that answers. You know, there's the famous question why did Yaakov want to run to get, get out? We understand why Asa wanted to run because he wanted, he said, Get me out of here. I'm learning Kalatari Kula. Get me, get me into the church. Get me into the shrine where I could do whatever I want. I could copy the gods, you know? But why did Yaakov want to leave? He's learning Torah from Amalek. So there's all kinds of Terutsim that. He wanted to leave because he couldn't stand being in the same proximity as Esau. So you, even if you have a great Rebbe and you're learning great, but if it's in a bad environment, you've got to get out of there. 
Or, as people say, Yaakov wanted to learn with Amelis. Or Yaakov wanted to learn Amanas Lassos. It says the reason why we don't remember the, the Torah in our mother's womb is because we, there's no Amelis. So Yaakov wanted to start learning with Amelis. He wanted to go to Yeshiva Shem Aver. But now it's not even a kasha. Because the fact that Yaakov wanted to leave, that was only orchestrated that she should get the Nevoah, who Yaakov was and who Asa was. And it stopped afterwards. It also answers another kasha. In Tavshin Tezvav, when the Shepachayim, when the Kozim of went for the first time to Eretz Yisrael, so the Shemeh Amunim Rav reported that the Kozim of came, it was Pasha Stoldes. And he asked this kasha that I'm going to ask you. He asked, it says that when she passed the church, Asaph ran out to go. So the close of Rebbe said that's very un of like All his life, Asaph made it look like he's a tzaddik. If you look in Bereshit's Rabbah, it says, we know, we, we always explain why was he called Asaph. Because it means also, he was complete. He was born complete already. With, with, with teeth and molars and, and a beard. But the Medrash says, Esav is Inyan Shav. He's a phony. Or as the Medrash puts it, Oh, Shav, he's a phony. Esav was always, how do you take mice on salt? How do you take mice on straw? And Esav was always a phony. Right? It, it doesn't, Seem Ace of like asked to close the Megarebbe for Ace of to run out openly to a church. That's not the way he practiced his life. If he did, he did it clandestine behind closed doors, but not openly. To the contrary, openly he killed Nimrod. He got rid of the one that was murdered against Hashem. Right? That's why it says in the Medrash, when it talks about Ace of, it says, Asif, who hakazir? Asif is the swine, right? Because the swine sticks out its legs and says, look, I'm kosher, right? The swine has split hooves, just doesn't chew its cut, but it sticks out its legs and says, look at me, I'm kosher, that's Asif. <coughs> so it's interesting, the close of learned such a fascinating pshat. He said, pshat in the medrash is, is that Asif ran out to the church he ran out to show that he wanted to destroy it. That's what Asa ran out. He wanted to destroy it. He was a phony till the end. That's why the close of the learns. That's why the Shef Chaim learns. But according to the way I'm learning, it's not a kasha. Because that which Asa ran out wasn't Asa. It was to show the Nevoa to Rivka. It's not a kasha. You're right. It's out. It's... It, it, it's out of character for Asaph. Asaph was a phony. And by the way, that's why the Torah is so strong against being a phony, being echad bepev echad belev. It's so, that's the, 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 what's so criminal about Hanifa, to be echad bepev echad belev, because that's the way of Asaph. It's not the way of Yaakov. Now we know that Yaakov was called Yaakov either by Hashem, Rashi says Tup Shotim, either by Hashem or by his father, by Yitzchak. So when the Torah says, why was he called Yaakov? Because when he was born, his hand was holding the heel of Esau when he came out. So every year I tell you, could you imagine? It's by the bris, and Yitzchak is talking. Everybody's saying, shh. And Yitzchak is explaining why he's giving the name Yaakov. And he says, I want to tell you why I'm giving the name Yaakov. 
you see in the delivery room there was a Kodak moment. I'm not sure if anybody here anymore remembers what Kodak is. It used to be a film. I know nobody knows what film is. It used to be, it used to be called the Kodak moment. Right? So Yitzhak says it was a Kodak. It was so cute. He was holding the ankle, the heel, not the ankle, the heel of his older brother. So he decided to commemorate that, that Kodak moment and called Yaakov. And people are shaking their heads. He's holding the heel. What's that all about? So there's a Medrash Agodol. Interesting Medrash Agodol. We know that they were struggling, but it's right, so it's also a lotion of contention, of Ritza. They were contending who should come out first. So the Medrash Agadol says that Esav threw down the gauntlet and he said to Yaakov, if you don't allow me to go out first, then I'll break through mommy's wall and kill her and get out first that way. You're going to block the entrance and not let me pass? Then I'll go out, I'll go out through the side, killing mommy in the breath. So Yaakov was so afraid that Esav would do that, so he grabbed a hold of his heel, the heel of his right foot, to stop him. And that's how they came out. And Yitzchak already recognized the greatness of Yaakov. I've talked about in the past that it was also a miracle because we know that Esav was murderous and he already destroyed his mother's womb. And then he saw up Yaakov's fontanel and figured, I'll finish off the job. I'll kill all the competition. And he slammed his foot down. Remember, Yaakov was only a baby. He was a full man. To destroy Yaakov. But Hashem made a miracle. That he was able to stave off his brother's uh, attempt. So that was also a miracle. Also said there's a tur. The tur says that he was called Asa uh, Yaakov because Asa would have been born, and when a woman has twins, she has to go through again the pain of delivery to to have the next child. And Yaakov already sensitive and anticipating at a young age said, why should my mother suffer through two pains? So he held on to the heel to come out of one shot to save his mother the pain. So when we call a girl base Yaakov, it's already, although you'll say, well, base Yaakov doesn't make sense, base Yaakov. It should be base Avram. Yaakov is the ish tyrant. That doesn't fit for the girls. Avram is chesed. So why, why? It shouldn't be the base Yaakov movement. It should be the base Avram movement. Of course, the reason why it's not is because base Avram would include even the Arabs. And Beis Yitzchak would include the Romans. That's why it's Beis Yaakov. But it's also Beis Yaakov because Yaakov was also a similar symbolism of Chesed. The Torah says that Yaakov said, if I don't hold on, my mother will have to go through the pain of labor delivery a second time. It's very, pain- very painful. Another Waiting another 10 centimeters. Maybe I'll have to run Pitocin. It's very painful. They don't have epidurals. So he grabbed onto the heel to come out of one shot. And by the way, that's a very big key in chesed. A big key in chesed is anticipating a person's needs. I tell children often, and I tell husbands and wives often, you tell me you do what you're asked. But when was the last time you offered help? You initiated help. A person should anticipate a spouse's needs before asked. That's the chesed that we're talking about over here. Vayav Yitzchok es Esav kitzayid befiv. And Yitzchok loved Esav kitzayid befiv. Rashi says kitzayid befiv because Esav was his personal chef. Esav knew how to prepare 
a filet mignon like no one. And therefore Yitzchak loved Esav. That, that's very remarkable. If I told you that Ramosha loved the Bacher because he liked his blintzes, you would find that kind of difficult to believe. And if I would tell you a mystic like the Arizal liked somebody because he knew how to pickle a herring better than anybody else, you would look at me in disbelief. And yet the Torah says, And the Targum says, Because he ate from his uh, cuisine. Boy, did he know how to marinate a roast. Ah, mamish. It was, it was mouth-watering. So many years, I said over the great lesson that the Torah wants to teach us that a road to a man's heart is through his stomach. It's a chazal. A road to a man's heart is through his stomach. You know, it had bothered me over the recent years that Svarim stores have been taken over by novels and cookbooks. As a matter of fact, if you look at even the rarefied publishing house Artscroll, almost every one of their full-page ads has a new cookbook. A new cookbook. And it seems to be a downgrade. Used to be, you would uh, advertise a, 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 a new safer on the Rambam and now it's desserts or short order meals right? then I began to think that for a woman one of the premier ways of being an Ezek Kinegdai is to cook, to vary the meals, to learn her husband's palate. And it helps greatly in bringing Shechin in the home, just like learning brings Shechin in the home. Because he should be Isha Shalom Beinayim, Shechin Ashur Beinayim. A wife serves a good meal to her husband after a hard day's work. It brings shalom in the home. And therefore a cookbook does have its place in the Swam store. It's a tool of the Shechina. And that's very important. However, the Shachal Atayra and one of the previous Ramim of Panavish say the same thing, a very innovative Pshat in this Pasuk. By Yav Yitzchak as Esav, Yitzchak loved Esav, ki tzayid befiv. Yitzchak tricked Esav with his mouth to make him believe that he was fooled. Yitzchak wasn't fooled. But he knew that if he didn't show love to Esav, Esav would go completely off the derech. As it is, all the while that Yitzhak was alive, Esav kept everything undercover. Even with his great enmity to his brother, he said, But only after father leaves this world. Shachal says, what a big Kiddush to learn the Pasuk. We have to know that this is a way to learn the Pasuk. Vayav Yitzhak as Esav, Yitzhak loved Esav, Kitzayit Befiv. Yitzchak tricked Esau with his mouth. What a contemporary we hear so many times from the contemporary educators in the generation of children at risk that you have to show the child love. Yitzchak didn't let on. He let Esau believe that he was fooled. Shach, shach in the passage. Yaakov Yishkam Yoshev Ayholim. 
Yaakov was a man that sat and learnt in the tents. The tents, of course, are the tents of shame Vaver. Oyele Shem Vaver, the academies of shame and Aver. As Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky used to say, he learned the Torah of shame was Duchigang in the Dar Hamabel, and the, the, the Torah of Aver was Duchigang in the Dar Afloga. This would serve him in good stead. He gave it over to Yosef, which help, would help him survive in Mitzrayim. But asks Moreen of Rabbeinu, Ramosha Zechtav Kershav Rachas Chusi Yogan Aleinu. Ramosha asks, you know, it's interesting. Avram Avinu was put into a Kifshanesh. He had to go to do battle against four mighty armies to save Lot with a few hundred people, or maybe just with Eliezer. Then he was asked to slaughter his son. Yitzchak was put on the Akedah. And yet it's Yaakov who's the Bechir Sheba Avos, the chosen one of the Avos. It's Yaakov who's Dmus Yukna, whose image is on the King's Yaakov. So Ramesha says, because the Ika that's expected from a human being is not to pass tests. To the contrary, we're asked that we shouldn't be given tests. The Ika is to spend one's life learning Torah and doing mitzvahs. That's what Hashem wants from a person. That's the Bechir Shabbat. Yaakov Ishtam Yoshev Yalim. Many of the Balimusa say that Esav was the Ish Sada. Well, Yaakov was the Ishtam Yoshev Yalim. Remember that Abraham Avinu passed away. early in order not to see uh, Esav go out bad. But it seems to be that there was a very big difference between Esav and, uh, and Yaakov. I mean, Yaakov was in the yeshiva and Esav was in the field. So the commentators say an interesting thing. They were both in yeshiva. I mean, if he fooled Yitzchak, then that means that he wasn't a, tr- a truant. They were both in yeshiva. The difference is, is what did they focus on? Yaakov was the Ishtam Yeshev Yehalem. What was important to him was talking to learning. Esau, while he was in the yeshiva, what was important to him was to get out in the field and to hunt. He was always pining for the Ben and for the time off to go and hunt. I tell a lot of times young girls not young girls, young ladies that date, that if you find that the young man speaks mostly about what he's going to do on his time off, then that could be a sign of what's most important to him. If he's not talking about the yeshiva and the learning and the chavrusas and, and the rebellion, but he's talking about skiing and he's talking about uh, you, you, you know, going on vacation in Vermont, and that's all he talks about. You have to know what, even when he's learning, what's on his mind. And now I'm going to share with you something that, although it happened thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, it's very contemporary. Vatiyena moiras ruach liyitzchak ulerifka. The wives of Esav caused a bitterness. Yitzchak Ularifka. Now here the Medrash makes a diuk that is very easy to miss. Medrash asks the Kasha, why first to Yitzchak and only after to Rivka? Now, how does the Medrash know? Maybe they both had bitterness at the same time. So the Medrash makes a diak in the Pasuk. It says, moiras ruach. The wives of Esav were a bitterness. L'yitzchak u'lerifka. Grammatically, it should have said L'yitzchak v'rifka. To Yitzchak and Rivka. 
from the fact that it says Yitzchak Ula Rivka, it means that first to Yitzchak and only after a while also they bothered Rivka. Rivka was more tolerant. So the manager says, why was Rivka more tolerant? Because she grew up with it. She came from a house of idolatry. Her father was an idolater, Besuel. Her brother, Lovin, was an idolater. Right? We know that when, Rifke, when, when Eliezer came, it said, he said, Ufinisi Abayas, we cleared the house out. But listen carefully. The Oitzer Pnini Atayra makes the following observation. He says, Rivka was used to it. Rivka left the house when she was three years old. She was only lived with it for three years. At one, at two, at three, when she was in the crib. Secondly, it's already 60 years since then. And even so, she was still able to tolerate it. 60 years ago, only when she was one, two, and three, she was able to tolerate it a lot longer than Yitzchak. You want to know the impact something makes upon a person even in a young age. I'm going to present it to you in another way. It says, that Yitzchak had started having problems with blindness. So Rashi tells us from the ocean, from the smoke of the idols, from the smoke offered to the idols of the wives of Asa, asks the toys of Sashali, so then why wasn't Rivka also blind? So the toys of Sashali answers Rivka was used to it because she grew up with it. Toys himself asks, but wait a second, she was only three at the time, and it's 60 years since then. Says Sarachiyan. So the Bali Musa say, you see that even if a person is exposed to something a long time ago, even when they're very young, it leaves an indelible impression. And then he brings a story. It's a frightening story. So there's a family in Bnei Brak the wife went to a beach, an old woman's beach. And she brought her two-year-old with her to the beach. Two-year-old. The father went and asked the Chazanish, is it proper to bring a two-year-old boy to a woman's beach? Two years old. It's in a carriage. The Chazanish said, no, he doesn't belong in a beach. And the exposure could affect his learning later on. And they bring a raya to this. It says, why does the woman have dadim by the lathe? The others by an animal or by the Mokama Erva. Not by the leaf. The Gemara says that the child shouldn't look at the Mokama Erva of his mother. The child is nursing as a baby. You see what even a child is exposed to as a baby makes a difference. Now why am I uh, talking about this? Because we're living in a generation where people are exposed to things on the internet on a daily basis. That person says, ah, I gave a glance, so what? So what? You know, I was curious and I went on a site. Eh. It was an adventure. I only looked. Imagine looking one time has an impact 60 years later. 
And we're not talking about a two-year-old. We're talking about a mature adult looking at things that schmutz. Now, I hesitate to mention it because I don't want people to say, okay, I'm ruined. I looked, I'm finished. Rabbi Nishlam knows people's Yetzirah. And what he demands from us is to correct our mistakes. That's what he demands from us. You know, I'll mention now, in the past few shiurim, I said something in the past parsha. So I was by a, uh, a Sheva Brachis this week in the yeshiva of Staten Island in my alma mater. It's interesting, I went to this Sheva Brachis not because of the chasen, but because of the kala. The kala is a girl from my community, from Willowbrook, who came to the, to the uh, my wife's Tillam group for many years. So I went to bring my wife. So they asked me to speak. But while I was waiting, I heard Rav Ginsburg, one of the Kosh of Aramim, he asked a kash. He says, it says, we all know that last week it says that Sarah, when she was a Bas Kuf, she was like Bas Kuf for sin. She was 100, she was like 20 for sin. So he asked his obvious question. So if you make it that Sarah Menu was without sin. But we all know that Sarah Menu said, Chamosi Olecha Yishpar Hashem Beiniyu Beinecha. And because she was Moisir Din L'Shamayim on Avram, she passed away early. We know Ramban says that she was held accountable for Vatane Asara. That she caused affliction to Agar. So how could you say she was sinless? Obviously she wasn't sinless because the Gemara of Baba Basit tells us only four people died without sin because of Itkei Shonachash. Sarimena wasn't one of them. It's a big cash on Rashi. So then he said that in Rav Chaim Kanani Yevsky Sefer, Tami the Kro, they asked the question, and he says, Kfar Hikshu. They already asked the question. Like it's a bumba. So I want to propose an answer, which has to do with what we're talking about. It says, Shnei Chaye Yishmol, so we dash in by Sara, Shnei Chaye Sara, Kul and Shavon Lataiva. So it says Shnei Chaye Yishmol. It's also Kul and Shavon Lataiva. How can that be? It says Yishmol was Mitzachik. And Rashi says that's Gilai Roy, Shvichas Dom and Avedis are all wrapped up in one. The big three. So how can you say all his life is Kul and Shavon Lataiva when Sari made him kick them out of the house? So the Riva and the Rabbim about Tanur give the same answer. And that is that Yishmol did Shuvah Me'ava. When you do tshuva me'ava, tshuva from love, zdoina is nazis kizchuyas. Even your willful sins become mitzvahs, so you clean your slate. That's what happened by Sarah too. About as she did tshuva me'ava, it cleaned her slate. Once it cleaned her slate, so then she's baskuf kabaskuf. You have to know that the Rabbi Nishalaylam says, I can only ask you to correct. I never want you to look back and say, I'm ruined, I'm finished. Adarabha, we say in, in Davani, Baruchat to Hashem, Oroitzeb is Shuba. Hashem says, No, I want you, I want you. There was, ah, I looked at things on the computer, I'm ruined. Never say that. But also realize that it shouldn't be done. If it's done, it makes an impact on the mind. It can make an impact on the mind for 60 years. And now listen carefully. This is a Mayridika. You know what, before I tell you this, I'm going to make another observation since we're on the subject of Tznius. Of modesty. I'll tell you a story that happened about a month ago on an Arab Shabbos. To me. 
I was up Thursday until the wee hours of the morning. And Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, I overslept. I didn't go to sleep. Sleep till 5 o'clock, 5.30. I overslept. And when I got up, there isn't really any very late minion in Staten Island. Nothing after 9 o'clock. I overslept. So I decided to go into Borough Park to Davin and Munkach. I get to Borough Park. And I'm not usually in Borough Park on an Arab Shabbos. And I didn't anticipate that it would be absolutely impossible to find park. I'm late already as it is. I didn't anticipate, so after circling for about 20 minutes and watching the time tick by, I took a risk and I parked a little too close to a, a pump, to a hydrant. So I go and I get a Gavaldi a minion. Ah, I learned a little bit after that. I come back to my car. And there's a $115 ticket on the car with a note that I'm not 15 feet away from the hydrant. So maybe I was 12 feet away from the hydrant, not 15. So, of course, you could imagine I was quite disgruntled, you know, that for three feet I got a $115 ticket. But after my initial disgruntlement, I reflected on this and said, you know, that's the way it is in Yiddishkeit, there's a cutoff point. A mikveh that's 40 saws, kosher, 39 saws, puzzle, and the woman is not tar. She's a nida, she's chayv, karis. A case that can hold 2.9 fluid ounces, you could use. If it's less than 2.9 fluid ounces, you can't use. The Erev has to be higher than 10 tfachim. If it's not, you can't carry the sukkah has to have 10 tfachim height. If not, it's not a kosher of sukkah. But it's only 9 tfachim. You're going to quibble on a teva? That's the way it works. It was just, you know, I was a little bit disgruntled about 15 feet, but that's the way it is in Yiddish guy. And then I began to think about how sad it is when girls and young ladies wear sleeves above the elbows and hemlines above the knees. And they say, it's only a few inches. You're going to quibble about a few inches? You're going to brand me for a few inches? And to me it's sad. Besides the halakhic issue, from a pragmatic issue, that a young lady should because that's what they sell in all the stores or many of my friends do it that because of these few inches she will block out a whole class of wonderful boys that will not even consider dating her because it's a few inches above the knee, a few inches above the elbow. What is she sacrificing? I'm saying besides the halachic perspective of modesty, the norms of modesty, what she's giving up. Now many times, the reason why it's done is because if it's good enough for my mother, it's good enough for me. So my, my mother dresses that way. Perhaps even my grandmother dresses that way. It's good enough for my mother. I, it, it's good enough for me. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But it's not true. Because the mother might not have gotten the privilege of a Beis Yaakov upraising, an upbringing. She did. So more is expected from her. Now I'm addressing this either to parents or to women. Men shouldn't talk to girls about how they dress, except your own daughters. It's very unhealthy for men to speak to girls about dress. Because then the girls say, oh, I see you notice where my hem is. I know where your eyes are looking. Women have to do it. Or old men. 
heard that once from Rabbi Reisman asked Rav Schwab by an Ask the Rabbi session in 5 Beekman Street. How do we teach women Sneas? So he says, either get a woman or get an old man like me. That's what Rav Schwab said. I don't want to belabor this, but it's something that needs to be thought about. Now listen to this diak. What a, what a powerful diak. Vayizra Yitzchak ba'aretz ahi Yitzchak planted vayimtza b'ashan ahi me'asharim What a windfall! Hundred times! Vayigdol ha'ish vayelech halach v'gadol ad ki gadol mo'i And Yitzchak became very prosperous. So I'm Harav Moshe Aaron Rosenthal Zech Tzadik Levrocha Schusa Yogan Aleinu makes such a powerful diak. He says, when the Torah talks about our tzaddikim making a killing, getting rich, it doesn't mention them by name. Mm-hmm. You see, Yitzchak made it big. It says, It's the same thing by Yaakov. Remember when Yaakov made a killing? When he did that shtick with the... With the Sheep, and he said, Whichever one's a polka dotted, right? And he went to the trough and he cut the wood, right, in certain ways. And when the sheep made it, they saw it and it became polka dotted. So, what does it say over there? Vaksovim here for Yaakov, Yaakov separated the sheep, the Sam Yaakov as a maklois, and he put out the, it keeps on mentioning it by name until Vayifrait so ish might might, he became very wealthy. With Soin and Gamalim and Avodim. Again, it mentions it. Ish, not Yaakov. Why? What a lesson. What a powerful insight. Because our tzaddikim did not consider their identity their wealth. That did not make them who they are. When it talks about the Ish, man, that's not who I am. I am not defined by my wealth. There are many people today that they're defined by their wealth. They're defined by the car that they drive, by the house and address that they live in, by the corner office that they have, by the summer home that they sport, by where they travel on the plane, first class, business class. That's not how the Obasakadoshim, that wasn't their identity. The Torah, the mitzvahs, the chesed, the avoida, the emes. Chesed lavram, emes liyakoiv, pachad yitzchak. That's who they were. Not by their bank account, not by their portfolio. That's why when it talks about, and it's something for us to think about. What do we consider is our identity? Makes us who we are. Ah, you're a good husband. Ah, that's an identity. That's an identity. Good husband. That's an identity. That's an identity. Even about tzedakah. Oh, that's an identity. But the car that I drive, the address that I live in, that's not, that's ish. That's not a, that's not a person's identity. You know, it's kind of early before Hanukkah for me to have the pleasure of mentioning my favorite Agada, the Beis Aaron. And I get to mention him twice in the Shirin told this. If you remember who this was, Rav, Ar- Rav, Rav, Rav Friedman from Chop, who was murdered by the Nazis at the young age of 37. And he wrote over eight Pirushim on the Haggadah. So he wrote a pirish called Marble Sapper, where he writes Sipurim of his experiences by the table of Rebbes. So it's interesting. Yaakov came to his father. So I've, when, when it comes to Pesach, I've spoken about this, that there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our goddesses. And Kemat Noah Gadol was printed with Shalom Aleichem in it. 
Seder falls out on Friday night. Come on, no. They finally printed one Haggadah recently. The Ma'iris Haggadah has a Shalom Aleichem in it. But most Haggadahs don't have Shalom Aleichem in it. So the Bells of Rebbe, Rebbe Sacher Dov Bells, said it's a minig in Bells to say Shalom Aleichem. If the Seder falls out on Friday night. He says many, many, many reasons were given. He wants to say another reason. We know that the Seder night is the anniversary of when Yaakov came in and got the brachas. That's why it's brought down. That you, even if you don't give your children brachas the whole year, but you should give it by the Seder. That's why it's brought down that we steal the Afikaimen. Right? It's a Zecher, the Shnei Gedia Yizim that was brought on the carbon Pesach and the carbon Chagiga. He says it's brought down in the Medrash that when Yaakov was going to go in, he just couldn't bring himself to go in and trick his father. Couldn't do it. So Michal and Gabriel came and pushed him in. And since that happened on the night of the Seder, so he says, how could we not say Shalom Aleichem to the Malach? We wouldn't have gotten the brachas if it wouldn't be. How could we not say Shalom Aleichem? We only know this. The source, single source for this story is from this Haggadah that survived miraculously. It was, was given over to a Yid from Dumbava and he himself passed away and it was buried and it was found by an American soldier. It was found by a, a soldier and bought for a dollar. It's a very old miser. So there's another thought that he says on this week's parasha. It says, We all know the famous Medrash, which we hope that the Knesset realizes more and more that the Yadayim Yedayesav is directly connected to, to the Kel Kel Yaakov. It's actually a Medrash in the Psichta Echa Rabasi. Medrash says, "Kol zman shekoylo yishol Yaakov mitzavtzef b'batik nesias b'batik medrash is ena yadayim yadayes." The famous part of the Gra, Hakol Kol, the second Kol is written chaser. So Hakol Kol, if the Kol is kal, is weak, dead yadayim yadayes. But one is written mole and one is written chaser. So. The base Aaron says, because the Medrash says, Babati Midrashias and Babati Knesias. In the base of Medrash, you're supposed to learn Badafka loud. So that's why one curl is written Malay. But in the base of Knesias, we know we're supposed to have Malachash. Especially Shman Esrei. That's why that curl is written Chaser. Everything has a reason. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you something that Rav Shvadron said over from Rav Leib Malin. I'm going to die. So what do I need the Bechayra for? I'm going to die. The Bechayra is with Avoida and the base of Migdish. Life is short. What do I need that for? So we all know the famous Gemara, I've quoted it numerous times in this year, that a person's lo- mission in life, and the Gemara uses the key word la'aylam, which means that it's a mission statement. It's something that always should be before us. La'aylam yargiz adam yetzer toiv al yetzer person should always... Make sure that the battle, that you don't go on cruise control. The Yetzirah is constantly in action, trying to distract us, seduce us, like we said in the beginning of the year, to ruin us. So you always have to be on guard, you always have to be aware, you always have to be fighting. So Rav Shvadron quoted the Gemara in Shavuos on Daf Lamed Aleph. It's Halakha in... Jewish, Jewish jurisprudence. Gemara says, Menayin lishnayim shebooladin. Two people come before the judge. Echad lovish samatutin. One is wearing rags. 
The echad lavish, it's still a me'amon. And what is dr- dressed in a really Seville cut suit. And they come before the judge, one in beggar's rags and tatters, and one dressed to the nines. Sha'imrim light, they tell the rich person, either lovish kamaisa, either put on rags like him, or he'll be shul kamaisa, or go to the tailor and buy him a, 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 a Seville row suit. We won't listen to the case until. That is met. So says, how do we know that that's the halacha? Shenemar midvar sheker terchak. Distance yourself from falsehood. In other words, the impression on the judge would be impossible to ignore. This man, he's put together. This man is a schlump. Who do you think is right? Be hard to avoid that, that argument. Says Rav Shvadron. Here we have a battle between the Yetzir Tov and the Yetzir Hara. How is the Yetzir Hara dressed? <laughs> the Yetzir Hara is dressed. He wants to take us on a cruise. He wants to take us to the Bahamas. The Yetzir Tov says, no, 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 no. Wait, okay. The Yetzir Hara is, is, is our knight in shining armor. It doesn't seem to be an equal playing field. How, how could we not be seduced by the Yetzirah? I mean, the Yetzirah is telling us all the time, don't do this, and don't do that, and don't do this. And the Yetzirah says, come on, I got, I got, you, you want to be rejuvenated? You want, you want to have a good life? Come on, the Yetzirah looks, the Yetzirah is in rags, and the Yetzirah is, is, is He's all dressed up and everything nice and pretty and exciting. How could, how could, we, how could we be level-headed? So the Gemara says, the first thing is Yasak Batayra. First thing is you got to taste Tyra. If you taste Tyra, then the Yetzir Tyra will be dressed well too. And if you tasted the Tyra, and uh, he said, I'm sorry, but uh, it's not very tasty then that's because you're not learning Torah B'tara. So then Yikra Kriyashma, you got to be in Kabbalah Omar And if none of that works, Yizker Lo Yoy Mamis. Remember that all that the Yitzhahara offers you is very short term. We believe in life after death. And all that he offers you is Mamish for the short term. It's not for the long haul. And then he says even a step further of Shradran in his beautiful way of dissecting thing. He said, Yiskalo Yoimamisa. Ask yourself, how would you feel on the day, if you know the day that you die? And the Yitzhar then comes and says, well, let's go out and shoot pool. The day you die, you're going to go shoot pool. On the day that you die, you're going to go and yell at somebody. But any day could be that day. Yiskalo yoy mamisa. So then Shvadran says, but you see it doesn't work by Esav. Esav says, thinking about Misa made him worse, made him despise Avodas Hashem, the Bechaira. Avodas Beis English. So he says, well that's simple. You see, we know what, what's right. We know to learn is right and to have an opinion is right. Just we have to fight the Yetzirah. So Yetzirah says, look, <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta hop around, you got to grab every chance. But by Esav, he, he was only interested in this world. If you're only interested in this world, then the song is, is king. Drink and be merry because tomorrow you might die. If that's all there is, then you better hop around another barbecue. You better have a ride in other princes. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.